Hi, I'm Dave Young from CryptoCoin.News with ICO Interviews. This week we have the great pleasure being joined from Italy by Andrea from Multiversum.io. Let me let you do the introduction of what is Multiversum, uh, what's the whole project about? Hi, well, thank you for your warm welcome. First of all, we are not only Italian, we are spread in the almost many um, countries in Europe. We are in Hungary, we are in the uh, UK, we are in Spain, in Germany. So it's not uh, an Italian project, it's an international project. Uh, um, Multiversum is, is a technology, first of all. It's a new technology that brings a real relational blockchain a relational database in blockchain. That's a very important thing because uh, actually we all, almost all the um, database structure in blockchain uh, is just very simple. Essentially can be a um, document database with all data just put inside like in a blog and so it's very difficult to use a formal language to make queries and you can use uh, a SQL-like uh, language that is very familiar to people working in an industry. So in this way, we can just make the cost of developing uh, applications for blockchain go really down. And we also want to achieve uh, this point, uh, giving uh, drivers and uh, layer of integration with uh, frameworks like uh, Spring Boot and Spring Framework or .NET in order to make things easy and make the blockchain enter in the real industry, enter in the offices, enter in the e-government with minimal effort. So we are making uh, things to let uh, the industry, the real people, the real office, the real business enter in this sector. This is the first thing, this is the technology. And upon this technology, we are going to develop uh, an infrastructure, a distributed uh, decentralized ledger. Uh, what is it? It is uh, an infrastructure that allows uh, third application, third party application to connect and use our infrastructure without uh, have a duty to build one by themselves. So our, I don't use competitor, but our uh, example in the market are, for example, Ethereum. It offers the same thing, but it's an a older concept. It's older for, uh, because it's slower, because it has not such evolved data structure that we can offer. So it can be faster because we offer um, parallel processing. We can offer uh, uh, horizontal scalability of our system. And we can offer a data model that is uh, formally more evolved because our data can be indecised, our data can be sh sharded, so distributed and not only present on in the on world net, but only on a region of a cluster that is optimized, that is uh, uh, considered to be safe and uh, resilient to attach, to crash and to, to be, to, to get warranty, have ability of data. Wow, that's absolutely excellent. Andrea, how did the idea and the team from uh, Multiversum get born? How, how did you come about? Yeah, well, uh, the idea was born just because uh, all the colleagues uh, with whom I speak say, oh, well, that blockchain is a very cool stuff, but that is a close in a ghetto. So it's a close in a ghetto of uh, easy investment. I buy Bitcoin or Ethereum now and I sell it in two weeks and I can take 20%, but has not industrial meaning. And an application made on Ethereum can be only very easy. They can have a quite easy model and use the ledger for external confirmation, but not really for having a, a database like in financial is need, like in e-government. And uh, uh, I was uh, exposed to blockchain in two times. One was in 2010, and I was probably the most stupid guy in the world because uh, one colleague of me offered 5,000 Bitcoin for 1,000 euro. And they said, oh, well, <laughs> good idea, but <laughs> I, I, I'm investing in our thing in that moment. And so I have lost the biggest possibility of uh, my life at that time. Uh, the second time in which I was exposed when I was 
working uh, with Alexander Borodich of uh, Universa in uh, e-government project. Uh, and uh, they wanted to realize uh, an anagraphic system on blockchain. And I saw the problem because at the time I was working for uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs of Hungary. And uh, I was able to see the complexity behind an e-government framework, an e-government uh, uh, infrastructure. We have uh, from one to two hundred of different systems interconnecting, and uh, every system had, has a dozen of different entities connected. So blockchain absolutely was not able to represent and to, uh, and to work with that kind of complexity. And I started to think how to achieve that. And I found a very good solution. We have a pilot that works uh, really well, that realizes uh, all uh, the rules we have found uh, to realize a relational database in blockchain with states and uh, with immutable records that we have to keep, uh, but we also have relationship, and uh, we don't want uh, to, to update uh, all the hash in cascade in case uh, we update uh, one day. So we, we made a very good proof of concept and very good pilot, and it is working. Uh, and obviously there's arguments for both. I mean, we see Ripple being very centralized. We see uh, Ethereum being quite decentralized. Uh, you've, you've, by the look of it, as I understand, taken a more centralized approach. What were the factors that came into play and what advantages, what, 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 what made you decide to go down that certain route? Well, uh, actually, multiversum as technology, not as infrastructure, is uh, centralization agnostic. So it is not important for us whether what we realize with multiversum is centralized or decentralized. We can afford both scenario. In fact, we have uh, many partners looking for us, and uh, someone uh, who want uh, a centralized um, cluster, someone want a decentralized cluster, someone want uh, a um, hybrid solution. Um, our infrastructure is decentralized. Why it is decentralized? Because uh, it's, uh, first of all, a market requirement. In this moment, uh, uh, if I propose to a market a centralized solution, people uh, wouldn't really appreciate, independently from what I think. The second motive is that uh, there is uh, only one big, uh, big advantage I recognize uh, absolutely in uh, the centralized structure, that they don't need uh, an entity, legal entity, physical entity, that manage it. So in every time I can say multiversum crypto system, that is our firm, will close because we have reached our targets and goals and the infrastructure go forward alone without having to depend on us. So we can really have a different future from our ideas. So we are not even uh, jailed on it uh, when we finished. And this is good for the market, it's good for the investors uh, because it gives... Uh, oh, it's very good to have a balanced approach, um, I would agree. Now, the MTV token uses a, a proof of integrity model I was reading. Now, that quite interests me. Could you explain to our, our, our viewers uh, what is the proof of integrity model? How does it work? Yes, well, uh, proof of integrity is a new concept that uh, would want to substitute uh, the proof of work and proof uh, of stake uh, in the anti-majority hijack uh, mechanism. Uh, we believe that using uh, Linux and uh, virtual container security, we can achieve the fact to uh, make impossible for uh, someone running uh, our node to substitute the code inside the node. So he won't have access with root or any credential and is only, only allowed to run the image in his virtual machine. Uh, besides, we have a lot of mechanism to prevent uh, uh, falsification, to prevent attack, to prevent uh, hacking. And last of all, we will have, we have 
a mechanism to dynamically check what's, uh, what's in the memory, in the heap of uh, the Java virtual machine that run that uh, uh, server. And in that case, uh, uh, long story made short, uh, we will uh, give uh, within, uh, with every transaction, a challenge word, a challenge string, uh, and it will be recalculated, uh, the hash of it, uh, with the hash of the memory. Okay, and after the ICO, are you guys aiming to get public on the exchanges? Uh, if so, when do you think your coin might be listed on the larger exchanges? Well, uh, as I said, as multiverse, we are not uh, officially dealing with that. But I suppose we will uh, support uh, other groups of, of people that will manage that because uh, we believe that if we create a strong economy we, around the coins, uh, uh, it, technical things can be managed better. So we are also giving attention to that but not internally in the Multiversum, just as a sub-project. Okay, Andrea, that was, that was very nice. Uh, I would like to ask you a general question on the market, because I'd really like to know, you know, somebody on the inside, your opinion. What factor or factors do you think that could come into play in this year, in 2019, that could derail the uh, ICO train? No, I think uh, that there will be very big changes. So people are getting smarter and more conscious of what they have to invest in. So many ICO will die, won't even start because uh, people require more, require really plan, require uh, really better ideas. First, this is the first new in the market. The second one, uh, uh, happened during the World uh, Economical Forum. So that was, uh, we were present uh, with uh, Michele Orzan uh, at that meeting uh, in which uh, they were decide the future of blockchain. So, you know, uh, international organizations are very important for defining uh, the rules and the target and the directions of laws uh, national laws and initiative and uh, in that meeting it was decided that blockchain is here to stay and we are as multiverse here to stay and after that decision if you notice it after that meeting if you notice it a lot of uh, national rules uh, changed uh, the sake of united states become much more soft and say they're not going to combat against block Bitcoin, they're not going to combat against uh, cryptocurrencies or blockchains, they are just going to regulate. And that regulation is uh, one very important thing. As you know, we are in Belarus as office and legal headquarters, because the Belarus is the only country at the moment that really gives a perfect, complete legal definition of blockchain, of ICO, and this is important because uh, in our countries uh, there is uh, a legal uncertainty for which uh, we are in risk, investors are in risk, uh, because uh, it depends on the judge, on what he compare the blockchain. Is a cryptocurrency a security or a utility, is a stock? No one know what it is. Depend on what the judge in Italy or uh, in Spain, in Germany, what the judge think it is. And uh, investor and uh, firms want a uh, want, uh, safe legal environment. Okay, so we see, we see an optimistic outlook. We see uh, a need for regulation. In other words, people flocking to the uh, places where good self-regulation happens, and therefore, hopefully, we'll, we'll see a, a good growth in, in ICOs. Yes, absolutely. Uh, would absolutely. you agree? 2000. Okay. Thank you very much for your, for your time today. It's been a pleasure. I wish you the greatest luck with your ICO. Uh, I, I hope you have a, a success and a, a great launch. Uh, thank you very much for your time thank today you with us, Andre. Thank you for your interest and your time.
I'm Dave Young from CryptoCoin.News. This was ICO Interviews. A massive thanks to Andrea from Multiversum.io. Stay current, stay valid, stay tuned. Till next time.